Hello again, this is Arabella, and thank you for joining this adventurous book. This book is about saving wildlife. And with me saying that, let's get into the story. Mr. Johnson took his class away for the week. They went to a big house called Sea Bay House. Mrs. May went too. The children were excited. Sea Bay House was near the sea and there were lots of interesting things to do. Everyone unloaded the bus. Some of these bags and cases are heavy, said Mr. Johnson. We're only here for a week. Mrs. May found a toothbrush. Whose toothbrush is this? She asked. Oh dear, said Biff. I think it's mine. Mr. Johnson showed the boys their room. You'll be sleeping in here, he said. I want the top bunk, shouted Chip. No. I'm on the top bunk, shouted Wills. Mr. Johnson tossed a coin. Heads or tails, he said. Mr. Johnson gave the children a map. Then he took the children for a long walk. After a while, they stopped for a rest. The children looked at their map. Mr. Johnson showed them the places they could see. Your map's upside down, Biff, said Wills. Nadine pointed to a little island out to sea. What's that island called? he asked. Look on your maps, said Mr. Johnson. Who can tell me what the island is called? Chip and Nina knew. It's called Green Island, they said. Everyone was hungry after the long walk. When they got back, it was time for supper. The children served the food, and then they helped wash up. I don't like washing up at home, said Will. But it's fun washing up here. That night, the children were tired, but they couldn't sleep. Chip kept telling jokes and making silly noises. In the end, Mr. Johnson came in. He was cross with Chip. I'll send you at six o'clock tomorrow, if I hear any more noise. The next day, the children did a beach study. Some children worked with Mr. Johnson. They made squares on the beach and looked at everything in each square. They found a shell with a crab inside it. It's called a hermit crab, she said. Some children worked with Mrs. Ray. They looked carefully in all the rock pools. Nadine and Wilf caught a large crab. Look at this, they called. Mrs. May showed them how to hold the crab. We'll look at it, then we'll let it go, she said. Chip and Nina found the seagull. It couldn't fly. Oh dear, said Mr. Johnson. It can't fly because it has oil on its feathers. Oil is hard to get off, so be careful everyone. Mind you don't get oil on you. How do we get the oil off the seagull? asked Chip. Mr. Johnson took the children to see Mrs. Hum. If anyone can help the seagull, Mrs. Honeycan, said Mr. Johnson. This poor old seagull needs a queen, 
said Mrs. Honey. She looked at Amina and Chip. And so do you, she said. Oil is terrible stuff, said Mrs. Honey. You can see what it does to animals and birds if it spills into the sea. It is terrible, said Mrs. Ray. I'm having trouble getting it off Chip and Anina. I feel really sorry for the seagull, said Chip. What will happen to the seagull? asked the whale. Its feathers will be damaged, said Mrs. Honey. So first we'll clean the oil off. Then we'll look after it for a week or two. It has to get strong again and its feathers have to get better. Then we'll let it go. Mrs. Honey looked after all kinds of animals. She showed the children an otter. Then she gave it some fish. She is a sea otter, she said. I call her Fiona. She was hurt by a boat. Now she's better. I'm going to let her go. Sea otters live on Green Island, said Mrs. Honey. If you like, you can come to the island with me and watch me let Fiona go. Mrs. Honey had a boat. There's room for everyone, she said. If we're lucky, we may see some more sea otters. The children went across the green island in the boat. Mrs. Honey stopped a little away from the island. The children looked carefully. Suddenly, Amina pointed to some rocks. I can see another otter, she said. Look everyone! There aren't many sea otters left, said Mrs. May. So that was a wonderful thing to see. Mrs. Honey let Fiona go. The otter dived into the sea and swam towards the rocks. Will Fiona be all right now? asked Will. I hope so, said Mrs. Honey. Mrs. Honey took the boat to the other side of the island. You can get up and explore, she said. If you keep quiet, you will see all kinds of interesting seabirds. The children jumped out of the boat and went to look around the island. The children saw a small cake. They ran to see it. I wonder if it has treasure in it, said Wolf. Maybe it's a secret tunnel, said Nadine. Maybe it leads to a secret computer base. But when they got to the cave, they found something else. In the cave were some drums. I don't like the look of this, said Mrs. Honey. These drums have been dumped on Green Island. They are full of toxic waste. Keep away from them everyone, said Mr. Johnson. Why would anyone want to dump them here? asked Biff. It's hard to get rid of toxic waste, said Mrs. May. It costs a lot of money to do it safely, so people dump it. We should tell the police, said Mr. Johnson. These drums can't stay here, said Mrs. Honey. They could do a lot of harm to the wildlife. Suddenly, Chip and Wolf ran up to Mr. Johnson. There's a boat coming to the island said Chip. There are four people in it. I don't like the sound of this, said Mr. Johnson. Keep out of sight, everyone, said Mrs. Honey. I want to see what these people are doing. The boat stopped at the island and four people got out. 
They lifted some drums out of the belt and began to carry them towards the cave. They're dumping more waste off this island, said Mrs. Honey. I want everyone to run back to my boat. Don't make a sound. I have an idea. The children did what Mrs. Honey told them. They ran to the boat with Mrs. May and climbed in. I hope the boat will start, said Mrs. May. If it doesn't, I don't know what we shall do. Do you think those people are dangerous? asked Chip. Will and Chip pushed the boat out with the oars and Mrs. May started the engine. So far, so good, said Mrs. May. Let's hope Mrs. Honey's idea works. I hope Mrs. Honey and Mr. Johnson will be all right, said Will. Mrs. Honey's idea worked. She and Mr. Johnson had taken the other boat. The other people couldn't get off the island without it. Hooray! shouted the children. They won't get off Green Island unless they swim all the way back. What are you doing with a boat? shouted a man. Bring it back. I'll get the police to bring it back, shouted Mrs. Honey. You can tell them why you've dumped toxic waste on Green Island. <sighs> said the man. The police took the people off the island. Taking their boat was a brilliant idea, said Mr. Johnson. I'm glad we caught them, said Mrs. Honey. I'm glad we caught them, said Mrs. Honey. And I'm glad you are with me. I couldn't have taken their boat by myself. What an adventure, said Mrs. May. Look at those drums of toxic waste, said Will. I can't think why people would dump them where they could do so much harm. I'm glad the otters will be safe on the island now, said Nina. At the end of the week, there was a party. Mrs May played her guitar and everyone sang songs. Mrs Honey came. She told the children stories about some of the animals she had looked after. But you had the best story to tell, she said. It isn't every school trip that becomes famous. A photographer came. She made everyone stand in a group. Then she took a photograph. We're going to be in the newspaper, said Wolf. We are going to be famous! I've never been famous before, said Chip. I wonder what it feels like. The next day, the story of Green Island was in the newspaper. The children were excited. I'm going to buy three newspapers, said Chip. One for me, one for Mum and Dad, and one for Gran. Now I'm famous! I don't feel any different. Said Will. And unfortunately, that is the end of this adventurous story. Hope you enjoyed this book. If you asked me, I love this book. It's just one of my favourites now. And I will see you next time, my friends. Goodbye for now.